So the whole zip sheathing thing, I'm just gonna make some quick points on my experience with it and kind of what I think about it. I think it's probably 70% marketing and 30%, okay, it's fine in some instances. And it's critical to know which instances those are. And if you don't, like I didn't, and almost made a really big mistake. I was gonna, I was gonna sheathe the outside of this structure with the zip wall system. And that would have been devastating to this envelope. And let me explain why. So this envelope here has an inner wall, which is the air barrier, and then dense pack cellulose, and then sheathing on the outside, and then siding. And that sheathing on the outside has to be able to pass vapor because the whole wall cavity, all lumber, all structures are all constantly drying. And, you know, some of them water gets in and that's either from, you know, poor air sealing from the inside space or, uh, you know, exterior water can find its way into structures. And that water has to be able to get out, whether it's dripping out bottoms of rain screens or whether it's just drying out over time. And your outside wall, and this type of assembly has to be able to breathe. And the zip system is non-permeable. Vapor can't go through it. I tape all those joints with a non-vapor permeable tape and zip system wall sheathing, that outside wall is gonna trap any moisture that finds in there and keep it in there. Because it's not gonna dry to the inside because it's moist inside. That would have been a disaster. And I almost did that just because I was like, oh, it's green. It looks so good and it's all taped. It's like, oh, look at my pretty structure. I wanted to cover it in zip system and then show everybody, look at my zippy system house. This is amazing. It's green and black. Wow. No, no, it's marketing. And like, okay, it's got a coating on the outside. I thought, oh, pff, zip system? I don't need to have one of those Tyvek-y things on the outside. That'll be great. Nope, you do, still do. So I was like, oh, I'll get to save having to, how do you unroll that big thing? And no, you still do. And uh, nobody does, nobody installs it, but I guess it's debatable, right? You could argue that that coating replaces the weather resistant barrier. First of all, it wouldn't take much to replace Tyvek anyway. Tyvek is at best a temporary product. I don't expect to see Tyvek hanging out 30 years later on a structure doing its job. It's just not gonna do it. Zip system coating, it might do that better. It might. Um, but the thing is like, you, what I keep coming down to is like, Okay, maybe it replaces Tyvek, maybe it doesn't. You know, maybe it's long lasting, maybe it's not. Maybe it's a good water barrier, maybe it's not. The thing is like, I played around with the settings on my nail gun, the entire roof system, trying to get the nails to penetrate at the right depth every time I drove a nail. Now maybe you have a $700 nail gun and maybe every time you go to use your nail gun, you're always perfectly perpendicular to the substrate. But chances are you're not, which means the nail is either going to go in too far or not enough and you're gonna hit it and, and you're not gonna go back and tape those with the zip system. You're just not, cause you're like zip system. Uh -huh. Maybe along the seams, but not in the middle. And so that's another issue is that you're penetrating your water weather resistant barrier every time you put a nail in. That, that's not a good idea. Like, that's not a good idea. And yet, everybody's using it. So, that's just my two cents. What, so let me, get, let me get around to what I actually think you should put on the outside of a house. You need to put something on the outside of the house under the siding that's gonna keep any water from the outside from getting into your structure. End of story. Like, that is the purpose of the exterior of your house, right? That siding over there is designed to keep the water out of your house. Siding for hundreds and thousands of years. 
maybe hundreds or thousands, probably not hundreds of thousands, siding was designed to keep the water out of your house. But the reality is there are places when it fails. There are places where it fails. This dog is absolutely nuts. Are you seeing this guy? Anyway, there are places where that fails. And those places are windows. If you design a house without windows, maybe you're okay. Um, and there are just, there are just natural, like, there are just places in, in this kind of siding and lots of kinds of siding where, you know, a nail went in and it cracked and a crack came down and then water got in and the water found its way. And the reality is, is that water can get under siding. And so if water can get under siding, what are you going to do? You're going to put something under the siding that keeps the water out guaranteed. That's what you're going to do. That's what you should do. But here's the thing. It has to keep the polyethylene sheeting. Boom. Spray the house with latex. Boom. Rubberized. No. You have to keep the water out and you have to let the vapor out from the structure. And that's the part that took me the longest time to figure out. Like the vapor has to get out. And you can say, oh, I don't have any vapor. We're dry, dry on the bone. Got a wood stove. Nope. Sorry. <sighs> vapor. Every time you breathe, every time you take a shower, every time you boil water, every time you make coffee, you're creating vapor. We create so much vapor. It's in our house. Okay. So you have a wicked leaky house. No problem. It's so leaky, drafty. Okay, fine. You could have a leaky house and then you could pay, you know, twice what you would need to in heat and then you'd be fine. Fine. The reality is we're building houses tighter and tighter and we're, we're taking steps to create structures that need less energy to be comfortable. And that's what, that's what, that's what I was interested in when I, when I started this. I wanted a structure that was not going to need a lot of energy to be comfortable. And I should have done way more research before I built. But now I'm like halfway through and I'm learning all this stuff. Not the best idea. So hopefully you can get pick something up from this video. Anyway, the structure needs to be able to get vapor back out. So how the heck do we do that? How do we keep the water from coming in and the vapor coming out? Well, it's almost like someone should have invented something by now, right? That could do this keeps water out, lets vapor out. And Tyvek was supposed to do that. The problem is Tyvek just breaks down so fast that you can't, you can't rely on that 30 years from now to be like weather water resistant and actually holding together. And the reason I say that is that this house is hmm, built in 2009. This is Tyvek and it's like just disintegrated. Not only that, but like these cedar shingles have like poked a hole like every two, every two inches. So like I've been staring at this Tyvek and just thinking like, this stuff is so weak. Not only that, but the actual stats on the Tyvek are not that great. They're not as vapor permeable as you really need. And it's not as water resistant as you really need. And it doesn't last long enough. Like why would you build a house, put on your protective barrier and have it be useless in five years? Like are you building a five year house that's disposable? Are you building a tiny home on a trailer? I'm not knocking those, they're fine. But I'm just saying, you're building a house for a hundred years. You want this thing still to be standing. So why not put products in it that are going to be there in a hundred years? Seems to make sense to me. So I found some products that do this. I found some products that keep the water out and let the vapor out as well. It wasn't that hard. I found them. Um, and so I'm going to use those on these structure because I just want it to be around. And I think that makes sense. And so I used the zip system roof material. 
And I kind of wish I hadn't, and here's why. The roof product also is non-permeable. Vapor can't go through it. I mean, it, vapor can go through it, but the permeability of this system is so low in the magic of video editing, let me provide the number there. Um, it's so low that vapor really is not gonna leave. Now, the issue is when you create a hot roof, you're just trapping all that moisture in the attic. And so you need super active ventilation in order to take care of that vapor because where's it gonna go? Now, you have a cold roof, you've got gable vents, boom, you're set. Vapor goes up, vapor goes out. You've got soffit vents, same thing. You've got ridge vents, great, it's vented, no problem. And that's what I have. That's why I'm not ripping the roof off tomorrow. Ideally, you would not be using zip system. In a crazy other end of the spectrum kind of world, you would not be using a roof sheathing. You would be strapping it, doing diagonal bracing for sheer strength, and you would be covering it with the same weather resistant barrier that I'm doing the walls in. It keeps the water out, lets the vapor through. Simple, simple. Not only that, they have plenty of products that auto seal nail penetrations through the membrane. So put a nail in, it's sealed, boom, water's not coming in, vapor can still come out. That's smart products, you know? Those are smart products. And so these products that I'm referring to are all manufactured and come from Europe. Europe, who knew? So why did these products come from Europe? Well, over there, they have really, really stringent standards on building codes. You can't build buildings that don't let vapor out and that aren't insulated to our billion. I mean, I'm sure they have numbers. Um, I'm not a numbers guy. So they have strict codes and they just adopted them years ago and they just use these products. This is just how they build. And so over there, it's, you know, it's commonplace to have really smart building products like these membranes that go on outsides of houses and tapes that stick for a hundred years and windows that air seal. Oh man, building science rant. Sorry about that. There's a, just a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you learn when you start digging into this stuff and planning and what the heck do I have going on here? Look at this. This foam nonsense. Yeah, this is like, I don't know what, I don't know what to do with this. The idea here is I'm gonna put rigid foam and like cover it with a concrete coating that's already around the rest of my house and never look back. It's just weird, like the ICFs ended and the floor started, the rim joist is sitting there and then the walls go on top of it. But I'm not quite sure how to finish that detail. Like I, I have a gap there. I don't even want to show you. Um, not only that, this is like, this is totally embarrassing. Like going off on all this building science and I'm using like used styrofoam. The stuff that I'm saying is bad, right? This stuff. This is got a concrete coating on it already um, from, I removed it from the previous foundation, but the idea here is that I have a gap under the wall in between the wall and the ICF and I'm filling it with this. I'm going to cover it with the concrete coating and hopefully no one will ever know except the entire internet that this nonsense went on. I just don't know what to do with this. So do some flashing and then I got this rigid in here. I'm going to do that over top of it and then I'm going to do my concrete coating. It's called Tough 2 something by Styro Industries. I don't really know. This is a really tough one. I went looking on the internet, found nothing on how you're supposed to finish these, like, how do you finish ICS? 
I thought about getting like roll asphalt roofing and like rolling it out and then it would look like I had a roof on my foundation, I guess. It's weird. I don't have a great solution for this. I'm not proud of this, but you know what? You have to understand that unless you're a contractor and you've done this so many damn times, you could do it in your sleep. Hey, no. You have to understand that unless you're a contractor and you've done this a thousand times, you don't know what you're doing. Hello, that's what I'm doing here on the internet. Showing people that I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. And that's okay. I'm doing it anyway. And I'm not gonna harm anybody because I try my best to research things and think about things and really figure things out. And that's the goal here is to inspire you to do the same. Figure it out. I don't know. I live life like that. It's not an exact science. Buildings might be. Structural loads, those are exact sciences. But styrofoam, foundations, not exact. Anyway, my rant is over. Thank you so much for watching. Cheerio. Oh, cheerio, that's a terrible ending. Thanks for watching.